Welcome back to another episode. Well, it's been a while since my last video, but here's a preview of some of the things to come. In this episode, we're going to be making an LED backlit sign in honor of Avengers Infinity War coming out on video this week. I'll be controlling the sign with a 5 volt trinket pro from Adafruit. Now normally you would be powering these externally, but we're only going to be running about 20 or so LEDs and it's going to be just fine just powering those LEDs straight from the board. While we're at the site, here's a few other things that I'll be using. The first thing I like to do is take all the real world components and 3D model those, starting with the trinket board, then moving on to the LED strip. Once I had the components all modeled, then it was time to design the housing and figure out how everything fit together. And here's a preview. In Illustrator, I created the design for the sign. The marble looking background is gonna be laser etched on the back and the front will be painted. To create some depth, I etched in three passes. Now it's time to create a paint stencil out of some vinyl. Time to start peeling. Be especially careful with those a-holes. Now it's time to transfer the vinyl to the acrylic using some transfer tape. The backing of the vinyl is kind of waxy and peels off easily. Now the vinyl is finally on that acrylic and we can peel off the transfer tape. I'll just use a black spray can for this. After giving it about 30 minutes to dry, it was time to peel off the tape and reveal the logo. The paint is still a little bit tacky, so it's a little bit tricky around some of these areas to peel off the tape without messing it up. But it turned out really nice. Here's a quick little preview of how it's going to look lit. Now it's time to 3D print the base. I just dropped it in Idea Maker, checked a couple settings, and then pressed Slice.
And I always scroll through all the layers and make sure everything is building properly before I actually print it. This one looks ready to go, so let's just upload it. I coat my print bed with glue stick just to help the filament bond a little bit better. That's what all that white stuff is. I give it a little tap to get it started and then come back with a thin tool to wedge it out. The glue stick comes right off with a little bit of warm water. Time to cut off those little supports. and just kind of pry off the big supports. It looks kind of rough on the inside, but nobody's ever going to see it, so it's fine. And double checking the fit, and it looks like it snaps into place really well. The cover is nice and snug too, so no glue required. Time to do some soldering. I'm using core wire instead of stranded. It stays in place better and also is easier to solder to the trinket board. Time to turn on the soldering iron. Eight hundred degrees is a bit overkill for sixty forty solder, but I'm going to be really careful not to overheat any of the components. First thing you want to do is tin the tip. This PCB vise comes in really handy for soldering connections. I'm just tinning those as well. I changed my mind last minute on the LEDs. I'm going to be using these instead. The white strip is RGBW, which has an extra white channel, but the black one is just RGB, which is going to be a little bit easier with the code I want to use. These strips usually come pre-wired, but that's a bit thick to fit in the housing. These are actually kind of hard to cut because the LEDs are so close together. Some snips might work a little better. Looks like 22 is going to do it. Definitely pay attention to the arrow. The wiring goes from the microcontroller to the strip, just like this. Now it's time to pre-tin the LED strip. I'll be using a little bit of flux just to make sure the connection is nice and clean. We're looking to leave just a little bead of solder here, or maybe a medium sized bead. Once both ends are tinned, all you have to do is apply heat and let it flow together. Looks like a good connection, but I still need to be careful. Those solder pads are really fragile. I don't really trust the tape, so I'm going to add some CA glue down the center. And the tape should help it stick as the glue dries.
Now it's time to test fit the board. And this may or may not have been the third attempt, but third time's a charm. Being very careful not to pull on my solder joints, I'm just gonna bend these wires around. Now I'll just line those up with the corresponding pins. bit more stripping, a little bit more bending until I get everything exactly lined up with the pins. Now it's time to pry this off and solder it together. I've got one power, one ground, and one data going into pin 12. And I'll put it in my vise. a little bit long, so I'll just snip it. It's finally time to put it all together for good. Now I just press everything back together and let the glue dry. And now it's time to do some programming. This is using the fast LED library and the LED strips are WS2812B. And data pin is 12 and the number of LEDs is 22. And we're gonna use the fill rainbow code, which is already built in. This is using just some example code and tweaking it a little bit. Let's go ahead and give this board some power. The pulsing red LED means it's ready to receive code. Let's upload. You can see here how the red, green, and blue mix to create all the different colors. All that's left is just to press the top of the base on and then slide the acrylic in. And we are done. As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the support and likes. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. See you next time.